Hi, Isaac Hyman, High for Our Digital here. Hope you're doing well. Thank you for joining me on this webinar where we talk all about the 2021 e-commerce holiday playbook and dive into the secret holiday strategies of the top 1% and give you what they're thinking, give you their insights, their ideas, their strategies that they're planning this season, this season, and help you elevate your brand to compete and win during this critical quarter, right? Everything is happening now at this Q4 time and you probably want to know what they're doing, how they're thinking about it, and how are they leveraging their database, their email marketing, their SMS plan, their CRM strategy to grow revenue and scale profits more predictably, profitably, and sustainably. Uh, so I'm excited to get started with this webinar and share with you all the insights. So to start, number one, have you ever wondered how the top 1% of e-commerce brands utilize email, SMS, and CRM to drive their holiday plans. What are they doing, right? Your inbox is, is filled with emails. There must be a strategy there, right? Because they're killing it every holiday season. Every season, they're grabbing more market share. They're doing something really well. And most importantly, they're omnipresent. They're everywhere all at once, right? They're on email, they're on Facebook, search, SMS, you name it. They're everywhere. What are they doing? What is their strategy? Number two, how do the top 1% and the upstart DTC brands, the brands you hear about, Brooklyn Inn, Casper, Away, they're seemingly omnipresent across all those channels. As we mentioned before, what are they doing? How are they becoming omnipresent? How are they being visible everywhere on social, search, SMS? What is their strategy? And does it work, right? And how can your brand leverage that as well? Number three, Ever wondered how to gain more profitable customers this e-commerce holiday season and grow your profits from profitable customers, right? Not everything should be a discount. Not everything needs to be a, a deal, right? How do you grow your business and not just give away sales, not just give away revenue, uh, uh, not just give away profits at the expense of a customer who may buy once? How do you get the more profitable customer and drive revenue that way, right? Have you ever wondered that? I'm sure you have because a lot of brands are. They're calling us about it. And finally, how do you turn those one-time holiday buyers who tend to buy once, how do you turn them into repeat customers, loyalists, customers for a lifetime, and brand advocates for you, right? How do you do that? Have you wondered how to do this and why the holiday season is so critical to doing that? Well, this is the webinar for you. So I'm really excited to dive, dive into that. Really excited to share with you how the top 1% think, how I myself have planned out the strategies for billion dollar brands, not just seven, eight, or nine figure brands, but billion dollar brands, huge companies that are killing it in e-commerce, have huge market share within their niche, and all of them are really doing a great job and how they think, right? So I'd love to share that with you guys. Some of the key takeaways I'd like for you to have from this webinar at the end of the day on holiday planning that the top 1% are thinking, the key takeaways from that webinar are, number one, why having an email, SMS, and CRM strategy CRM is customer relationship marketing, why it's critical to your holiday planning this year and every year. That's what that's number one. I'd love for you to take that away. Number two, how do the top 1% of e-commerce brands utilize email, SMS, and CRM to drive their entire holiday planning, even across search and social? I'd like for you to take that away and say, wow, this is how they do it. This is what I'm going to start implementing. Uh, and, and here's how they're thinking. And you know, let's take the next step. Number three, number three. What are the 10 secret holiday strategies that will help you win new customers, win back dormant customers, and maximize spending potential of your best customers, right? Who doesn't want that, right? The, the 10 strategies that they're implementing right now, I'm going to give them to you. The 10 ways they think, I'm going to share that with you, and it's going to help you win at e-commerce as well. And in addition, how do you leverage our proven spam strategy to send better messaging, reduce the number of messages you're sending, reduce your footprint? while also doubling your revenue, right? You don't want to be that guy who's always kind of like, you know, sending email, blah, 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 talking to people, sending SMS, you know, hammering people to buy, buy, buy. You want to be much more personalized, much more, you know, segmented, much more automated. You know, everything's got to be, while also doubling revenue, everything's got to be orchestrated here, right? So how do you leverage our proven spam strategy? For those that don't know, I'll go into what the spam strategy is. It's a, it's a unique way of looking at your email, SMS, and CRM marketing. How do you use that to double your revenue while sending less? And finally, I want to share with you some live examples of some e-commerce brands and how they are literally doing, 
how they are launching their holiday emails campaigns, their SMS campaigns, their CRM strategy, and why it works, right? Those are the takeaways I'd like for you to have. The, the most important part also overall is it's not just about the tactics. We're not just sharing the, the actual nuts and bolts of it, right? There's what once once you ask ask your team and once you dive into the your email program and get more in the nitty gritty, it gets a little more technical, a little more complicated. Um, we can do that and help you with that. But the overall is I want you to take away how they're thinking. That's the major takeaway. How are the top one percent thinking? How are the top one percent leveraging their database and thinking about their customer journey? Um, and not just thinking about it as a funnel, right? And just people are coming to the funnel and buying an item and gone for for the rest of you know another year. How to think of it from a flywheel perspective to get that customer, market to them as a person, as a human, and constantly grow the lifetime value of them. That's the major takeaway I want you to have, the strategy, the thought process, and becoming more customer-centric because that's the way you win the holiday season, and that's the way you win in e-commerce overall. So those are the key takeaways I'd like for you to take out of this webinar on holiday planning. And I'd like your attention, please, right? Give me your full attention because this isn't about me. This uh, I, I've we've done this. We have brands that are doing this. We've grown brands that are, like I said, billion dollar brands are doing this right now. So if you want your brand to get to the next level and win the holiday season, a very critical season, the most critical season of the year, turn off your cell phones. Give me your full attention. Turn off social media. If you're serious about growing your email program, serious about your SMS, serious about CRM, customer relationships, converting customers and growing the value, give us the next 45 to 60 minutes of your time and, and dedicate it. Because if you stay to the end, we'll also provide some extra value, right? We'll share our very popular growth guide where we can show you exactly the strategies that the top brands use to grow e-commerce revenue by 300% in 90 days. The frameworks, everything you need there. We're gonna give you our email and CRM cheat sheet. In addition, we're also gonna share with you uh, our holiday campaign planning, our holiday campaign calendar that has been used to grow millions in revenue. Share that with you and you'll be able to leverage it not just for email, but email, SMS, content thinking, you know, content planning, buying guides, gift guides, you name it. It's all in that campaign calendar. So stay at the end. I invite you. That's going to be really helpful to you. Now, let's get into a little bit about who I am I and why you should listen to me. Okay. Number one, I'm direct, I was the former director of email and CRM at one of the largest e-commerce brands in the nation. I was able to mentor and, and work with a lot of um, seven, eight, and nine figure brands on their email CRM strategy. I was, uh, I managed multi million email lists, hundreds of automations and lifecycle campaigns. I was asked to speak at ETAIL, at Post Funnel, at Blue Core Summit, other industry events across the US um, on email, SMS, and CRM strategy. And I, like I said, I've worked with hundreds of brands. And most importantly, I'm not just here to, to, to talk the talk, I've actually rolled up my sleeves and done the work. We've actually been able to grow our revenues for every single client significantly, not just 10% here, 20% there, which is great. 300%, 400% in revenue growth. Um, reduce your ad spend, reduce the customer friction, increase conversion rate. Uh, I've done it all and I know exactly how the, what the strategies you need to do it and the speed at which you can do it. And you can, you'll do it right. That's where I am and that's what I've done. I've worked with hundreds. I've built out the lists. I've built out the segments, the personalization, you name it. That's exactly why I'm hosting this webinar. I want to share these secrets. I'm on a mission to share the top 1% secret strategies with the small business brand and help them compete to win. Our mission at High Fire Digital is to help you build better customer relationships. That's our, that's our focus, right? We build better customer relationships using proven e-commerce, email, SMS, and CRM strategies, right? These are the most customer intimate channels. I'll explain that explain why that is in a minute. But our mission is to build better customer relationships, not just send an email, not just send a text, uh, not just you know send a, a postcard out in the mail. We want you to build a better customer relationship. And our mission as a team, and this is just a, a part of our team, our team is growing. Thank God our mission is to elevate your brand to compete and win in e-commerce. That's what we wanted you to do. We think there's an inherent value within what you're doing. Uh, for most of our clients, they've been around for years, maybe in some cases, decades. And e-commerce is still new to them. And they want to show how great they are to the world. And you can do that with e-commerce, right? You're not just a little storefront anymore. We're not just you know, a, a regional business anymore. You can be international in e-commerce. and But you got to compete and win at it. It's challenging. It's a crowded marketplace. So we help you elevate your brand to compete and win. To win e-commerce, we believe that you have to market to people, not emails. Behind every email address, behind every text message, there is a person, right? It's not, it's not a one or zero. 
um, it's a person, right? So you might need to reconnect with the person behind the email. That's how you win in e-commerce. That's how you win in general, right? If you're on the phone or someone, if you're talking to a person, there's a person behind the, that, that, that phone, there's a person on the voice, there's, there's someone you can connect to on a one-to-one -one level. Um, and then when you think of it as an email or you have someone running your email program and sending emails and sending automations, it just doesn't connect. It doesn't click. And customers know that and they can you know, understand which brands are doing a great job on personalization, which brands are doing a great job at listening. And, and that's really the matters, listening to people and hearing them out and building that relationship. And which is why our email and CRM values are, number one, build great relationships right? Your brand needs relationships. It's not the email. A lot, a lot of times companies come to us and say like, email's dead. It doesn't work. SMS, you know, is, is, is trendier. The, is social is where it's at. Email's dead. And it, it's never the email channel is dead. It never was. It's the relationship is dead. So we help uh, dust off the relationship, build better ones and build a great relationship for your brand and allows you to tap into that channel a lot better. We focus on the click. Every relationship starts with a click, right? You got to click with someone. Literally, right? That's how the phrase comes from. You go, oh, yeah, I met someone and you know, we just clicked. That's what we do. We focus on the click. Google built up their entire business just by clicks. Facebook ads are running on pay-per-click. That's what their business is about. And it's about the click because the click unlocks a wealth of information, a wealth of value, a wealth of data that you can now market to, that you can use for marketing purposes, but not just marketing to, for emails, marketing to people, personalizing the relationship. Focus on the click. Number three, we work smart, not hard. It's not hard work, right? If you focus on your automations, you focus on building out an infrastructure, um, a constant flow of data, constant listening to people as they are taking actions, well, that's working smart, not hard. So that's our core values about what we do and why it matters and why it's such a big dif differentiator among all the other email agencies and everything out there, sending emails and sending text messages. We'll send your emails for you build a great relationship. That's all you need to know. Build a great relationship, click with the person behind the email, and that enables you to work smart, not hard, and you'll grow revenue. And it works, right? You know, uh, you could say one of our, one of our, my great testimonials is in our most recent year, we grew revenue 50% and reduced send volume by 40%. That's one, you know, my time at Adorama. There you go. It's, it's, you'll send less emails, but everyone will have a better relationship. So you'll make more money, right? It works. I'm not going to go through all the testimonies we have. Glad to share with you personally, but I want to get to the meat and potatoes about what this is. So now, before we dive into our holiday planning playbook and share with you the top strategies that the top 1% of brands are thinking about this year, let's ask ourselves, what are they thinking about and implementing this year? What is their goal? What are they thinking about? Well, number one, the top 1% love email and SMS. It, clearly, they love for people to sign up. They love for people to join their list. The reason is pretty simple, right? There's, there's a data point you're sharing with people that they don't have on Google, right? They're clicking from Google. Google owns the data. They're clicking from Facebook. Facebook owns the data. They come to your site. That's where you own the data. So you have the opportunity now to capture that data and capture their entire journey and capture the entire long tail um, understanding of the customer all by capturing an email, all by capturing a data point. That's why the top 1% love it. I'm going to get into why it's also much more profitable, much more predictable, and a very sustainable revenue stream for your business. So now let's dive into why email, SMS, and CRM are critical for holiday sales. Why is that so critical for holiday sales? Why now? And why is it important? So let's dive into why email and CRM is critical for the holiday sales, the holiday season. Number one, for every $1 invested in email, $44 in ROI achieved. It's 40 times better than social. Right? As we explained, it's a free channel. We'll get to that in a second, but that's general. If you're spending $1 on email for your email provider, acquiring an email address at a dollar, dollar per email, you can expect to see a $44 ROI. You're going to spend more, buy more, and you could target them a lot more personalized. You can tell your story a lot better just with an email. It's the most profitable channel. There's no ad spend. You don't have to spend a single dime on ads. You don't have to spend a single dime on, on, uh, you know, on clicks. It is a free channel. So it's a most profitable channel. There's no ad spend. It's an own channel versus a borrowed channel, right? Facebook and Google have audiences that they have. They have the data points. They're letting, they're lending it to you. You're paying them to have them lend it to you and they'll share with you. When, when they click an email, when they click a link, guess what? 
then you've got a visitor, right? And you, you, it's your job to turn that visitor into a subscriber, into a buyer, you name it. But it's a borrowed channel. You're borrowing the data from them. Instagram is letting you use their platform to build an audience at any time. They can change it. Email doesn't change. Email is the owned email for the customer. SMS, the phone number is an owned asset for the customer. So it's an own channel. The more you acquire of the own channels, the better your business will do. It's also a customer centric channel. It's a very customer intimate channel um, where that one-to-one relationship can be built out. You are able to revolve everything around that customer because they're sharing with you the one, um, the one data point, the one email or phone number that is, you know, that they're using to log into um, different stores to use for work, to use to communicate with their school, to use uh, to communicate with their spouse, with their family, with their kids. It's all within the email and it's a very personal channel. So it doesn't get any more customer centric than that. So they, they're giving you opportunity to market to them. Take advantage of it. It's also, as I said before, it's a unique customer identifier. You can take an email address, pump it into Facebook and, and Facebook will find that person. They'll find people related to that person. You can do the same with Google. Take the email and pump it to Google and guess what? They'll find the data point. Can you take a Google data point and put it into your email and have them find the email? No. Can you do the same from Facebook in reverse? No. It doesn't work that way, right? It's a unique identifier. When you log in, if someone asks you to create an account, um, you know, not guest checkout, but just create an account in the store, what do they use? Your email, right? What do they ask for? Maybe your, your phone number sometimes. So it's a unique identifier and identifies the person and allows every single brand to start marketing that person much more personalized. Um, that's why it's so critical. But the number one reason email and CRM is so critical for businesses is this, the Pareto principle. The Pareto principle states that 80% of your results come from 20% of your efforts, right? That means that if you apply to e-commerce, 80% of your revenue comes from only 20% of your customers. Spending more time and efforts on your best customers will yield more revenue. Your job is to grow that 20%. Because the more you grow the 20%, the higher percentage of revenue your business will make. In addition, your job is to not lose that 20% either to Amazon or to competitors, right? You got to kind of nurture that your best customers because they will drive your business forward. Majority of your business um, will be comprised of one-time buyers who aren't growing into the next, you know, into next level purchasers, right? Because you're, you have such a great core audience that's attributing most of your revenue. So for that reason, being customer centric, revolving everything around that email address is the key to winning at e-commerce. Focus your energy on the customer growth, growing that customer from one time buyer to two to three to five to 10, you name it, that's the, where the magic is. So now when it comes to the holiday season, why are brands failing at email, SMS and CRM? If it's such a critical channel and so important for the holiday planning season for, for Q4, why are brands failing at it? Well, number one, most brands are focused on selling their stuff and not on developing, nurturing, or personalizing a relationship. They're just talking at people. And when it comes to marketing, you need to be excellent at listening, active listening. Someone adds an item to their cart, you listen, you send them a reminder. Someone browses an item on their store, you listen, and you send them an email, you send them a note. Guess what? We for you forgot about this. And here's something you may also like. Treat it like as if you're in the store, treat it personalized as if you're in the store, right? You want to have a personal relationship. Oh, I see you're looking at this. Why don't you come check out these out? These are great too. This is what you may be interested in. What color is it in? What size is it? And it gives you that kind of very personalized approach. But brands prefer to talk at people, right? They just go, I got something to sell. I'm just going to talk at people and just send them an email, send them an email, send them an email. That's not the way to win. That's why brands fail at it, right? That's number one. Number two, a lot of brands, like you said, if, you're, if you have something to sell, you're just going to constantly message people. That's a bast, batch and blast approach. They're just going to do a, Send emails, send emails out. I gotta make my gotta make my quota, gotta make my goals for the month and just spray and pray. Just hope something sticks, right? So that's where they fail at it because a lot of people unsubscribe from those. It's not you're not talking to someone correctly. If I'm looking at something else, I'm not interested in hearing about your if I'm interested in a red car, I'm not interested in hearing about your blue moped, right? It's not the same. Don't do a batch and blast approach. That's because that's how you fail. A lot of business owners also project their own email experience on results. Oh, email, it's dead. It doesn't work. I get too many emails. My inbox is flooded. So they project their own experience on, on everyone else's. And they could have 2,000, 10,000, a million, 2 million, 10 million subscribers on the list projecting their own experience on 10 million people. <laughs> that's a big jump. And that's why they fail at it. 
they also put zero focus on learning and A-B testing, right? Um, they don't know what's working. They don't know what's what's not, right? They see that, oh, I sent an email and it didn't work. That must mean it's terrible. Yet I sent an email the other day and it seemed to work. So I don't know, it's, it's a crapshoot, no knows, because they don't test. There's zero focus on learning, zero focus on A-B testing. And if you just tested, you see some incrementality across everything you're doing, but they put zero focus on it. So they're not learning and not growing. Also, they don't realize the customer's journey is just not linear. If you put an item in your email, let's say I'm selling a, um, a camera, a digital DSLR camera, and no one bought that DSLR camera I put in the email. Instead, I saw that they did buy a Logitech uh, um, webcam, and they bought a microphone, and they bought the speakers, they bought a tripod, whatever it is. You know, Well, the path of the customer is not linear. Just because you put an, an item in this email doesn't mean that it was very linear that they're going to buy that item. I'd love for that to happen all the time. That's where the segmentation and personalization comes in. But many times the path is just not linear. They're in the mood to buy something. They got your email. They're going to go buy whatever they're interested in. They got reminded of something, you name it. So it's not linear. You can't connect the dots all the time. So therefore, that's at that point is where they start saying, oh, it's terrible. It doesn't work, right? Well, that's, the path is just not linear. Finally, it's also not as sexy as social media. Social media is in everyone's face. Everyone loves it. TikTok's growing. Instagram's growing. Everyone loves these platforms. Everyone sees faces. They see real humans behind it. They see real emotions. And, and that's great. It, it's a great platform. Don't get me wrong. But it, email is just not as sexy as it. Yet it does a lot more. So they say, oh, you know what? Let's put our focus and efforts on social media. And there's a strategy for that. We have tons of strategies for that. But that's why brands fail at email SMS. They let it go and they kind of don't focus on it. And they use it as kind of this sounding board where they're just talking at people and blasting emails out, not learning, not doing anything. And because it's just not as sexy or they project their own experience on others. But here's, a, here's the key part. Why during holiday planning season, during Q4, why is this important now to get a grip on your email, SMS, and CRM strategy? <laughs> why is this important to focus on right now? Well, number one, you see that snow globe all the way down the bottom right here. You can see that it's it's you know think of it think of the world right now of e-commerce as a like I said a big snow globe where you know COVID nineteen disrupted everything and disrupted all traditional buying patterns and everything's kind of mixed up and you know one time buyers came here and that ton of buyers started buying in your store here they came out of nowhere and everyone just went to Amazon too you know so COVID nineteen disrupted everything and if you are focusing on on one channel and focusing on on your customers, they may have jumped to another brand. They may have jumped to somewhere else just to get something more convenient or, 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 or better pricing, whatever it may be. But right now, these pieces are all falling down. Like that snow globe, everything got shook up, pieces are still falling down. So you have the opportunity now to grab a better you know, portion of your customer base. You have that opportunity to collect as much as you can, take advantage of it. Well, otherwise, here's what happens. Amazon will come, absorb your customers through their dominant flywheel, and you have to compete, right? That's what it is. You have to compete with Amazon and how they approach it, right? The flywheel is pretty much that customers will start saying everything revolves on the customer and you have, you know, you're acquiring a customer, you're growing their value, and then you're going to constantly send it back out to, to the marketplace and, and start, you know, getting more like them. Well, Amazon is doing the same exact thing. Amazon is saying, we're going to grab as many people as we can, you know, at low price and capture them all. So you have to compete. You can't compete. When they're working on two-day shipping and you finally got two-day shipping on board, guess what? They're already jumping over into one-day shipping. When you're finally got one-day shipping going, they're already into two hours, two hours shipping, two-hour delivery. So you know what I mean? You can't compete with it. Instead, you focus on the mind, hearts and minds of the customer. That's why it's important now because Amazon will keep coming, coming, coming. They're coming to brick and mortar. When I heard they're opening up in the local mall near you as a fulfillment center and also as a kind of a shopping experience. You need to jump on it right away. And finally, there, there's direct-to-consumer, not finally, but there's another one. Direct-to-consumer brands and apps are inserting themselves between you and the customer. Uh, Uber Eats, DoorDash, you name it, are coming in. And before, you had a great relationship with your customer and you can communicate with them. Maybe not at scale, but you were definitely communicating with them. Now, your customer prefer, Uber, prefers communicating through Uber Eats. Oh, I could order it from you. I pick up the phone and calling, but you know, Uber Eats is so much more convenient. So I'm going to order... For order from you from Uber Eats here, an order from DoorDash instead of calling you. Well, that's a shame. You just lost that connection. So their apps are inserting themselves between you and the customer. You need to solve that. 
before it gets too, before you lose them all. Paid media is also getting pricier and erodes your margins, right? Everyone is now in e-commerce. There is a huge boost in e-commerce spending. Paid media, of course, it's an auction. The more people that are bidding, the higher the prices will get. So it's getting pricier and will erode your margins. Focusing on email, SMS, and CRM is the one area where you can say like, I can be more profitable, not spend enough, not spend a ton of money, and actually, you know, win the hearts and minds of a customer and make more money, make more, uh, grow more value. But the number one reason why this is important now is this: it costs six hundred to seven hundred percent more to acquire a customer than to keep a customer. Right? It's cheaper to retain than gain. So why pay? Google, Facebook to picture this. Why pay Google and Facebook to get you leads to your store? And then you're paying Google and Facebook to get those leads back. At, at some point right here in this middle is where you have the opportunity to capture that person, market to them for free and use those other channels as supplemental, right? As incremental. It's free, right? And it's, it's much more expensive to try and acquire a customer by getting them here and then getting them back. Once they're in the store, this is exactly where you need to catch them. What's your name? What's your email? What's your phone number? Let's, let's stay in touch. That's what it comes down to, right? If you went to a store, you would get the same approach. So why are you doing that? Why pay, um, why pay all this media when it's cheaper to retain a person than it is to gain a person? Especially going back to the Pareto principle. Remember, if you lost one of those 20% of your population, well, that would be hard to replicate, Right. You can't replicate a $10,000 a year customer by trying to acquire a $100 a year customer. That's inefficient. That's going to be really bad for business. Existing customers trust more, they convert better, and they grow faster. So knowing that is so important because that's why that's why uh, you know, brands grow. That's how the top brands are growing, by leveraging their existing customers and getting them to buy more. How do you keep customers? Email, SMS, and CRM. That's the strategy. That's how the top 1% of brands are thinking about their marketing, are thinking about everything they're doing. It's revolving around the customer and they want to keep as many as they can. Now, I want to go into exactly why the, what are the top four key holiday pillars that the top 1% of e-commerce brands are thinking about right now? What are the pillars that they're revolving around, right? We know the strategies. There are going to be strategies um, that, uh, that will reveal right here. There are strategies they're thinking about, especially when it comes to email, SMS, and CRM. But what are the pillars? Well, what are the major concepts that they're revolving around that they're making sure to address this holiday season? What are they? Let's get to them in a second. So now I'd like to talk about what are the four key holiday pillars for this coming season that the top 1% are focusing on? These are the areas that um, it's not just strategies about what, how they're marketing their brand, how are they thinking about their customer, what specifics are there. It's more just what are the major concepts and major, like I said, pillars that they're revolving around this season that will make a huge difference to their business. They'll make a huge difference to their to the customer and win over a lot of attention and win over a lot of interest. Uh, and, and engagement. These are the ones that are going to be really critical in the top of mind for customers. So number one, data acquisition. The, one of the top pillars that the top 1% of e-commerce brands are thinking about right now is data acquisition. First party data is critical, right? Critical. We're talking first party data pretty much means what data is the customer willing to give you for free or for, you know, some in exchange for some value um, that they're uh, immediately going to share with you. It's not you borrowing data from Facebook, borrowing data from Google, or, or kind of using different apps to share data with their, you know, with their brands. They're getting first party data. It's critical to a business. You need to get specific data from your customer that they're willing to share with you. This is the key to winning the holiday season, right? There's all these data points out there. Like I said, Facebook, Google, LinkedIn, phone calls, um, videos, you know, postcards, mailers, brochures, chatbots, you name it. All these data points are coming in and we got to have to sort them out. The top brands are sorting them out and saying which one is directly attributed to the customer that they're telling us this data, that they're sharing that with us because that's the most valuable, right? That's the cleanest. First party data is where they're focusing all their efforts on, right? So your goal this holiday season is to get actionable first party data 
from all the traffic that's coming to your store. You're going to see increased traffic this year. It's going to be a huge amount of traffic coming to your store, especially over the Cyber Five, the Black Friday, Cyber Monday weekend, Thanksgiving is included in that. So your job is to get actual data from that increased traffic. And there are many ways that you can, that the top brands are doing it, that maybe you have an opportunity to do that as well. The top brands are have fantastic loyalty programs out there already, right? So if you have one, enhance it to ensure you gain a good amount of force prior data or launch it. There's a great time to launch a loyalty program. A uh, loyalty program is a great example where you sign up, right? You go to the grocery, you have your card and it's a loyalty card and they scan it. Now they know all everything you're purchasing right then and there. You know, they give you a discount, of course, that you give some you know offers off your sales and promotions by signing up for that loyalty card, but they know everything you're doing and they can pair it in store and online, right? That's their loyalty program. A lot of brands ask you to create an account and, and sign up uh, and get points on every purchase. That's in order to help identify who you are and see your entire purchasing path in store and online. That is first party data. That's how they're acquiring it. So if you aren't, you don't have one, build one or, or sign up for one. And if you have one already, try and enhance it and make sure it's ready for the holiday season. Another way to get first party data is uh, gain, gain user generated content, implement quizzes, areas where a customer can self-select, can share with them, what am I shopping this holiday season, right? Uh, wish list is a great example of that. What am I shopping for? Add it to your wish list. Anyone who has a wish list for um, their husband, for their kid, for their coworker, any items on that wish list is user-generated content. It is self-selected data that they're sharing with you. Uh, put a quiz together where they say, hey, um, what can we help you find today? Are you looking for men or women? Oh, let's click there, right? I'm looking for a gift for a man. Um, okay, what size are they? What, what, uh, you know, what color is their favorite? All of this is generated, user-generated data that you can use for their business. And it's available to you. You just have to build it and get it moving, get it out to the customer. Self-selection data. Offer a value exchange, right? And if you have an amazing buying guide or expert picks or white papers around holiday buying, um, we have a, a, a guide to buying, um, uh, a guide to e-commerce for the holiday season. This, we uh, use this as a, this webinar as a, as a gated value exchange for uh, the people who have signed up. All these areas are fantastic places where you can kind of piece it together and say, I will give you this, this, this content in exchange for your email, in exchange for some self-selected data. If Consumer Reports came out with the top 10 laptops of the holiday season in 2021, wouldn't you want to get a, a that if you were in the market for laptops? Of course. So you'd give them an email or your phone number in order to exchange that data. That's a great way to get people to sign up and acquire first party data. The second pillar that the top 1% of e-commerce brands are focusing on this season, this holiday season that you yourself need to focus on is convenience. Convenience goes beyond just how fast will I get my order or how conveniently can I pick up my order? It's about a 360 degree complete e-commerce convenience thought process, right? It's not just about the order. It's about where does my customer need me to be today? Where does my customer need me to be during their entire journey, right? If a customer just placed their order, right? Let's say they got the order and they need to communicate with our team with customer service. Now, traditionally, they'll send an email. I'll pick up the phone or they'll go on the website. But there are times when a customer will DM you on Facebook or DM you on Instagram or, you know, communicate with you on social. Are you convenient for them there? Have you positioned yourself to be convenient for them there? That's important, right? You need to be where your customer is. Customers are looking to communicate with you in, in, in so many different ways on so many different platforms and so many different channels. Solving that problem and making sure there's a frictionless experience for them before and after the purchase is so important. That is exactly what we mean by convenience. So if you have buy online to pick up in store, match your delivery expectations, right? Mm -hmm. Offer clarity on what you're on, on everything you're doing. Offer clarity on the convenience available, right? Offer clarity on how easy is it to pick up your order? What are the COVID-19 restrictions? What, what do they need to take into account? Can I go online and, and buy it? Do I have to go to curbside pickup? Do I have to buy it, come to the store to buy it? Do I need a mask? All this is about saying, we're going to try and make this as convenient as possible for you to get your product you're interested in, to get you the gift you're gifting someone. Social commerce, another great example of how to be convenient. It's small, but it's growing. Social commerce, people are shopping on Facebook and Instagram and they're, they're checking out right there. Guess what? Are you positioned to capitalize on those orders? 
of course, it's got to be profitable for you. It's got to be worth it. But the point is, if people are buying there, you need to position yourself and say, hey, guess what? This is convenient for my customers. I'm going to start investing in them, start thinking about it. The top brands are. So if social commerce is something that your customers are, are veering towards, investigate and start implementing in time for the holiday season. Seamless return policy. It's not, it goes beyond just the purchase, right? Convenience is beyond just getting your item. It's also about how convenient is it if it's the wrong fit, if it's the wrong match, if it's something I don't, don't like, how convenient is, is it for me to get it back? 96% of customers will return to brands that offer seamless returns. That's fascinating because it's showing that you're making their return process so much more easier, so much easy, extremely easy um, to the point where they're like, you know what? I bought it. I didn't like it. I got it back. I'm going to try them again. That's how, that's how easy it was, right? So that is another area to focus on, especially during the gift buying season when people are buying gifts for someone else. You know, returns can, can, will definitely creep up this season. Pillar number three that the top 1% of e-commerce brands are focusing on right now this holiday season is going omni-channel. Going omni-channel is essentially saying, we know the customer journey and we're excelling in it, right? This is gonna be an area where the top brands are focusing on, especially when it comes to brick and mortar locations and online, right? Knowing exactly where your customer is shopping, knowing how they wanna fulfill their order, how they wanna receive their order, knowing how they wanna communicate with you directly, that's all omni-channel. That's all part of this process. So um, if there's one thing you do is you focus on fulfillment first and work backwards, right? This is the area where you start saying, hey, I need to get the, this person has a deadline. They need to get their order in right away. They need to get their item by December 23rd, by December 24th, latest, right? So we need to work backwards. We need to focus on saying, well, how do we get them their order? and make sure that we're delivering on their expectations before they place the order. Because if we drop the ball at the finish line, well, that's gonna be terrible, right? So focus on fulfillment and say, you know, knowing that there's a deadline to 7 23rd, 7 24th to get to their item, well, let's work backwards and make sure that our marketing is positioned to uh, let them know and say, hey, this is your window. We're gonna try and get you the item at this window. If you don't, or if you have a, if you're panicked or there's a problem or you're worried or you're unsure about where it is, we're gonna be fully transparent with you. We're gonna be uh, cl clear on where you can get your item. You can communicate across all channels. You can, you can dive into chat, SMS, text, you know, online, in-store, offline, phone. All these areas are how we're gonna communicate with you. And that is all about the fulfillment. That's all about the journey and excel in it every step of the way. An example of this is having that seamless in-store and online experience, right? If I'm online and I need to pick up my item, it's December 22nd, I need to get this item right away. Well, I need to know what your inventory levels in store, right? How transparent are you with your inventory levels? Is it available at my location? Is it available near me? If I place an, an order online, how soon will I get it? How soon can I get it? How many is available? How many are available? COVID-19 requirements, as we said in the last one, which is saying, you know, being, being clear with people about, you know, what do you need to know about COVID? Is it going to be delaying my order? Is it going to be a, a problem with fulfilling it online? Will it not come at a certain time? Will it come in the AM and the PM? Can I just come into the store and pick it up? All these are about being omnichannel and clear. Ensure customer service is available on social and chat, Right. As we said before, people are everywhere nowadays. They need to be, they want to be, you They. You need to be accessible to them conveniently for them, right? This is where you need to be. So um, ensure everyone, your customer service is available on the channels that they prefer. Social and chat are two of the most prominent up and coming ones that needs to be paid attention to. And I said it before, going seamless, seamless return policy is so critical. 96% of customers will come back. So being omni-channel in that area and allowing them to return in store as well will be great and allows you to maybe keep the purchase if they're returning in store. So being omni-channel and convenience go hand in hand. You need to be able to say, um, not only convenient, but I'm also thinking about you in store, offline, email, chat, everywhere. This is when, they, like I said, they go hand in hand directly in how they, the top brands are solving e-commerce th uh, these days. Omni-channel, always revolving around the customer, always here to focus on convenience for the customer. That's how they win in uh, 2021, that's how they're gonna win the holiday season, the top rents, uh, going omni-channel. And finally, the fourth pillar that the top 1% of e-commerce brands are focusing on this holiday season 
is transparency. You can see here, I have a couple order confirmation emails that came in, right? Your order's on its way, your order has shipped, has shipped. Now these are kind of out of the box. We all know that, we all get them. You know, shipping confirmation, order confirmation, but supply chain log issues and logistics this year could derail fulfillment, right? There's a massive backlog in supply, in the supply chain, um, be it from international shipping, you know, uh, in China producing items at a slower pace, getting it to them uh, into the US in a slower method, um, train, trains, planes, automobiles, all these playing a role in the fulfillment process. So the most important part isn't whether or not the item will be delayed or if the item will be there on time. It's about being transparent about everything and sharing updates as you go. That's how you will win in e-commerce. And that's how the top 1% of e-commerce brands are focusing on this season, being transparent. If, if you kind of say, you know what, you know, we're not going to get the order in time, you know, shipping delays happen, you won't get the item till five days later, or maybe you won't get the item by December 25th, whatever may happen, these things happen. But not alerting customers about it doesn't happen anymore. That just doesn't happen. The bar is set too high. You need to constantly alert your customers about what's happening, be transparent, offer multiple lines of communication. As we said before, omni-channel and convenience, it's all about multiple lines of communication, excelling in some of them, but understanding you have to be there. Email, chat, SMS, messenger, all these help solve issues and solve problems and allow you to be a, a helpful resource to every customer that's being transparent. And always be prepared with a contingency plan. There are many times if, if you can't get the item to them as on their, on their window, if you can't get the item to them when they expect it, well, at least you be prepared with a contingency plan. It may not be the best opportunity for you, it may hit your margins, it may be a struggle for your brand, but as long as you're prepared with a contingency plan. I had a client that was dealing with a massive backlog in, 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 from UPS and they couldn't deliver their items um, in time and it's a perishable. These are perishable items, right? They're food items. And he had, a, he had a big problem, but he was transparent with his customers and they stuck around, right? They said like, listen, this happens, nothing I could do. UPS didn't deliver in time, you know, Nothing I could do. I'm going to give you a discount off your next order. I'm going to make sure that everything happens smoothly right after the holiday season. And he was transparent and they stuck with him, right? So this stuff happens, but communicating with them is the key to winning the holiday season. That's transparency. That is what the top 1% of e-commerce brands are focusing on this year. That's a major pillar that helps steer all their marketing strategies this season and beyond. Now, in our holiday planning session in, in the holiday planning webinar, where we dive into what the top 1% of e-commerce brands are doing this holiday season, I wanna give a really quick refresher course on what the spam strategy is and, and why we coined it that way. Why, did it, why, what, why does it make sense? And, and then you'll understand how these strategies can be put at the forefront of your marketing and how you can win the holiday season using these exact this framework right here. So I'm going to go into it really quickly. Um, it's a very easy strategy to remember. It's a very easy framework to remember. It's S-P-A-M. We call it spam because everyone will remember it, right? If you say to someone, oh, I get spammed a lot. Well, that's you know, a good thing we're using our strategy, but in general, no one should spam people. But turn spam on its head, and this is how you do it. Segmentation, personalization, automation, and multiplication. The multiplication is blocked down there a little bit. Segmentation, personalization, automation, and multiplication. In other words, the way to kind of think about it is right person, right message, right time, repeat. Right person, right message, right time, repeat. Right person, right message, right time, repeat. This is the spam strategy. This is about saying, we're going to get the right person. We're going to find the right person for our message. We're going to get them the right message and personalize the message to them. Let them know that we know about them. We're thinking about them and we're listening to what they're telling us. We're going to send it at the right time, not just the right time of day, but the right time in their buying cycle, their purchasing life cycle. And we're going to repeat this, not just for one brand, not just for one type of customer, but on a one-to-one -one level for hundreds of thousands and millions of customers, millions of subscribers. That's the spam strategy. It works because we've done it for billion-dollar brands, multi-million dollar brands, and it works. You're going to send less emails, double your revenue, triple your revenue, grow 300% or more using the spam strategy. So right person, right message, right time, repeat, right person, right message, right time, repeat. Now I'm gonna show you exactly how to use that framework within the holiday season of 2021. 
And now we are at the 10 holiday strategies of the top 1%. Now is where we dive into what are the secret strategies that the top 1% of e-commerce brands are prioritizing now, the marketing strategies and tactics and thought process that they're implementing today for this holiday season and how you can use them, how you could leverage them, right? They aren't some sort of secret pie in the sky, unknown, you know, behind some sort of walled garden type of strategy. These are available to you. They're approachable to you. You just need to leverage them. You just need to know how to, how to use them for your business, how to customize them, how to personalize them. I'm going to dive into the right now. It, these are, these strategies will help dictate how your Q4 goes and how you compete to win against your competitors. I guarantee you, you start leveraging these strategies. They will change your business. They will help you win Q4 and help you win, not beyond Q4, win the whole next year. Strategy number one that the top 1% are prioritizing during the holiday season this year is a Q4 campaign calendar. You need to plan out Q4 entirely and cohesively. Dozens, thousands, hundreds, millions of brands don't think through their entire Q4 plan. They don't even think it through. They think Black Friday, Cyber Monday. They think I have the Cyber Five. We're going to send an email here. We're going to send an email there. Plan out your entire Q4 cohesively. Make it, make it extremely important. Make it, make it the most important thing you're doing right now. It's important to know that send timing, testing, rules of sending are out the window, right? People expect that you're going to get a lot of emails. People expect they're going to get a lot of messages from brands. People expect they're going to get a lot of marketing in their face because it's the holiday season and they're interested. They're, they don't, they'd rather overhear from you during the holiday season, which is, very, which is a big shift from, from their day to day, but they're willing to hear from you. So planning out your campaign calendar, not just from email, not just from SMS, but your content calendar, your, your social calendar, your webinars, your podcasts, everything out is planned out on this campaign calendar uh, and you need to do it now. And there's a few reasons for that. Number one, uh, there's a code freeze. Some brands, uh, some some tech providers have a code freeze and they just won't help you at some point, right? No one's willing to tamper with their technology when Black Friday is coming. You know, tamper with something, they may break, right? And that's not, that's not good for anyone. So that, they're not really ready, uh, willing to test something out um, in, in the short term. Or if there's a problem that comes up, they're not willing to jump on it. So the more you plan in advance, the more you're ready to say, like, here's our Q4 campaign calendar. Here's what we're doing. Now you know, now everyone knows, and they're all on the same page and they could troubleshoot still in October. Troubleshoot now in September. You can still troubleshoot it and still excel in Q4 by mapping it all out in advance, start to finish. From the minute you, your first promotions come in till the um, last few minutes of your of when you can ship an item to a customer, you know, across, across the, you know, from East Coast to West Coast. That is all should be planned out. Keep to a theme all holiday long across all your channels. Keep to a theme. Wayfair does a great theme. I, I'll be the first to say Best Buy has this great theme that they always run. Win the holidays. It's like a constant theme. Nordstrom does a great job at it where they're constantly saying, this is our style and color and fonts and look and feel. And it helps with brand recall, especially when you're being omnipresent. Remember we said before, um, omnichannel is key this season. So when you're omnipresent and you're on social, you're on search, having this consistent theme helps with brand recall and allows you to attract a much more consistent audience, even when your marketing is done. So keep to a theme all holiday long, plan out your calendar, play up the merchandising angles of scarcity, urgency, exclusivity, 11th hour offers, play up those angles across the board, right? There are many times you're gonna have a, an item to go on sale right away, um, sell it, you know, uh, scarcity, there's not many left, right? There's an urgency, get it before December 23rd, December 24th, you have a limited time. Get it before Black Friday weekend. Get it on Black Friday weekend. All these elements are holiday angles you need to play up. Uh, and it's, the, it's totally fine to do that because this is the holiday season. Everyone's willing to buy in advance, fast, get it, son, get, get it to them quicker because of that shipping logistics problem we had before. Urgency offers, daily deals, flash sales, 12 days of gifting. All these are critical during the holiday season and they will really drive your business. These aren't just created out, um, for, out of the blue, right? These are meant and showing the scarcity, urgency, and exclusivity that your brand has for certain products. So play them up really well and capitalize on other sale days that you may not remember. 
Did you know that there's a singles day? That's November 11th. That's 1-1-1-1, 11-11, That's singles day. It's a big day in China for brands to start selling product. It's like the, the Amazon Prime day here or the Black Friday here, whatever you name it. Uh, that day, November 11th, they have a great day to capitalize on that. Created a promotion on that day, one day promotion. It's a perfect place to say, how can we differentiate our brand? How can we pivot and start you know, capitalizing on days that not many people know about, but they're going to buy because we're, we're creating a sale, creating a promotion. Use it, use that, but plan out your Q4 campaign calendar, Green Monday, right? Um, you know, Thanksgiving Day is another one. Uh, yeah, December 24th is, is a special day, right? Um, New Year, pre-New Year's, you name it. There's so many different campaigns you can run if you map out your calendar. Here's a great example of how the campaign calendar plays a role here, right? So if you map out your calendar, you're able to say like, well, what happens after, remember, remember we're mapping out the journey, what happens after we send the, the Black Friday email right here? This was a Black Friday, um, kind of a sneak peek of a Black Friday, right? Um, so they sent this, I think it was like a Monday or so, where they said our biggest ever Black Friday is coming up. And I know I'm in the mood for Black Friday. I'm in the shop and I want, want to look at accent shares um, and items like that. So I looked at accent shares and my next email that came in my inbox was all about accent shares. You see here, accent shares on sale. Find your perfect accent share right here in the middle. The next email was, was all about, you know, here's the items everyone's been purchasing this holiday season in accent shares. And so now there's three emails because I know the journey. There's three emails in this flow that I'm going to get that are super personalized, you know, super segmented, and I don't need to rely on a batch and blast approach anymore, right? And now my customers, the person that gets this email will get this nice flow, this nice automation, and they'll be nurtured into their purchase through this nurture series. And I couldn't have done that without my campaign calendar, right? So Wayfair does a great job on it. And you can see here, everything looks the same. Everything's clear. It's all Wayfair related. So, and they know that every single part of it um, the flow of it is what will help them win the holiday season. The personalization, the segmentation of it, the spam strategy behind it will win the holiday season. And they did this, not just for accent shares, but for anyone that clicked on living room seating, bedroom furniture, office furniture, you name it, they all do it here. And that's how they win. Strategy number two, that the top 1% of e-commerce brands are thinking about this holiday season are buying and gift guides. We all know buying gift guides, right? They are this great guide where, where you have experts weigh in on what exactly is hot this season, what's not, what's what's trending, what's cool, what is the best gift to make this holiday season. But a lot of people don't realize that these are not meant to just kind of talk about what's hot or not. The, the goal of these are to build micro segments of gift buyers. Take Nordstrom right here, right? You have your Make Merry email where you're talking about all the best gifts, virtual gift help, start exploring. On the bottom though, they have gifts for all, gifts for her, for him, for kids. If I click on gifts for him, I'm interested clearly, I'm showing an indication. Remember we're listening, we're listening to the user because there's a person we're listening that I'm interested in gifts for him. So I know, Nordstrom now knows that we're gonna segment that person out. This person is looking at gifts for him. We're gonna start sending them curated pics of gifts for him. And that encourages browsing of different segments all from a gift guide, right? Browse a gift guide. And now that allows Nordstrom to develop a much more personalized approach to their marketing at scale. Uh, anyone who clicked gifts for her gets a different flow. Anyone who click, clicked gifts for kids gets a different flow. All these are micro segments of gift buyers where in the past you had this huge swath of people buying gifts. We all know they're buying gifts for the holiday season. And guess what? Now we've broken them down, down, down into micro segments. You could build incremental segmentation off that buying guide engagement and off category navigation. Remember we talked about that Wayfair email in the past in strategy where they had category navigation and you can click on a category and all of a sudden now you have a different segment. You're in a different bucket of gift gifters, accent share gifters in that case. And now they can market to them all about accent shares and get them to buy an item. Eventually, if they click another email, they have, can buy a second item. But it's all about the incremental segmentation that you didn't have before. That's what the, the richness and value of a buying and gift guide. If you do create a gift guide, no, don't, don't get me wrong. The gift guide is great to be read, watched, viewed, you name it, of course. And if you do do one, use video because 85% of buying guide video viewers are more likely to make a purchase. It's very easy. You're on video, you hear the, you know, the context behind it, not just the content, but the context. You see someone handling the product. You see it kind of like in a 3D mode, right? Um, you can get an idea of that, that type of gift and how it would look and feel. 
And that that is probably why 85% of them buy a uh, higher likely look, likelihood to buy. So create a video guide that's going to be help, more helpful than just reading a content piece. And as I said before, having category navigation yields better segmentation. The more categories I click, the more indication I've shown that I want to buy a gift in that category. Build a segment off of it. As we discussed in the first one, right, um, user generated content using quizzes and search allow you to create even more segments. So um, if I have clicked on gifts for him, you may want to send an SMS journey, a workflow that says, I saw you're interested in gifts for him. Can you tell him this is what you're looking for? I'm looking for shoes. Great. What size shoe are they? So shoes, size 10. And what's their favorite color? Blue, brown. Okay. Shoes, 10, brown. Wow. All that personalization unlocked just from that quiz gives your brand an, an edge over everyone else. Use it. This is how you can use gift guides and buying guides to win the holiday season because the top 1% are doing the exact same thing. Here's again, as I showed before, Overstock, Nordstrom does a great, you know, use the navigation, use it. You see at the top on the Nordstrom, they have an enter for a chance to win your holiday wish list. That's exactly it. You add items to your wish, wish list if you're gifting someone and you're gifting your mother, your father, your brother, your sister in different buckets. Hey, this person's gifting their mother. Look at all the gifts this person's gifting their mom. Now I personalize everything within the email to those gifts and now I can share even more items. Add in more, get not just your gift, get a stocking stuffer, uh, get a gift card for, for mom that you can use on these items. There's so many different applications. It's all about mapping it out. Map it out, but start with a gift guide to get that segmentation going. Strategy number three, that the top 1% of e-commerce brands are focusing on this year are a major focus on gift cards. You see right here at the top of my screen, you got gift cards from Banana Republic, right? Not sure what to get give the gift that never fails, right? We all know about gift cards. It's great. What cat, what started stimulating this conversation was this article about Starbucks, right? Is Starbucks a bank? Think about it. $1 billion is being stored on Starbucks gift cards interest-free right now. Why? Because it's convenient. Customers are just storing $40, $50, $200 on their Starbucks app, on their gift card and saying, next time I'm in Starbucks, I'm just going to scan the app and constantly replenishes, right? It just replenishes, put in more money. Meanwhile, Starbucks has this kind of like interest-free loan that they're using to fund their business, pay out bonus or whatever they're using it for. Um, and that is just like fantastic when you think about it because people are giving them money. You don't know, they don't even know when they're gonna use it next, right? If, I'm, if I had a Starbucks gift card, Next time I'm in Starbucks, maybe a month, a month away, maybe two months away, whatever it may be. Yeah, I get my coffee on the street. <laughs> you, you get random, random times you may pop into Starbucks, but you've elected to give them money in advance. What happens if you don't use it? Well, chances are you're going to use it at some point. But until then, it's Starbucks' is money. So that's what a gift card, the magic of it, it really is, right? You store your money. Customers are willing to give you their money in advance for a credit. And, but until then, they're giving you their money. And you have the opportunity to use that cash to start investing in promotions and get, the, get them get, start marketing to the customers a lot better and giving them incentives to use the gift card and, and, and not having to let it, let it waste. Because guess what? The average break, breakage rate on gift cards is 70%. That means one in six, about, yeah, about one in six. That money, they're never going to use. It's just ne they never redeem the gift card, right? So that money is entirely yours. Now, they should use the gift card and you're going to, give every effort for them to use the gift card, but guess what? They don't use it. That money is yours. And the top brands know this. So the top 1% of brands are focused on saying gift cards, gift cards, gift cards, because um, number one, they're giving us cash in advance. They're, they're paying for something. They're going to come back and buy at our store anyway. There's no place else to buy it from. It's our gift card. And those that don't use it, it's free money. So focus on gift cards this holiday season. And the most important part is People gift themselves and others, right? I, I didn't get to the stat yet. Maybe I did, right? 77% of people are buying for themselves and they're buying for someone else. So gift cards are great for both options, right? I bought a product for myself. I'm going to buy a gift card for someone else. And that gift card has to be used in my store. So it's a win, win, win all across the board, right? So um, that's why it's great to say this is a great way to get a repeat purchase. Two purchases in the holiday season. I'll get to that one strategy in, in a few minutes, but two purchases in the holiday season are critical 
and it's great. Gift cards help with that. Test a gift card promotion out. Maybe you want to say BOGO gift cards, buy one, get one. Give a gift card, buy a $100 gift card, get a $5 one for free um, to spend. You'd imagine the breakage rate on that, the, the amount of redemption on the $5 gift card, it's so small, but they're willing to give you, spend a $100 gift card to get that $5 one. That's kind of almost free money, right? You're not going to have to use that $5 gift card. You just incentivize them to buy it. Do it early in the season too. Why wait until December 23rd to start talking about gift cards because you can't get your gift anymore? Do it early. Put it on the top of your emails. Put it on the bottom of your emails every single day in the holiday season and test out promotions, right? Maybe I do a tiered offer to different segments of buyers. Someone who bought, was only buying a $50 item you know, in perpetuity every year, just buying a $50 item, a $50 buyer, give them a gift card to say, like, you know, spend $75, spend $100, we'll give you something free. It boosts their average order value. It gets them to change up and try something new, right? Um, if they're a one-time buyer, give them a gift card. Say, I offer your next purchase. Here's a $5 gift card to spend. You know, off your next purchase, turn them from a one-time buyer to a two-time buyer. Great. All these are great options to use for gift cards, but start early in the holiday season. That's the most important part. If you wait till December 23rd or December 24th to say like, can't get items anymore, well, buy a gift card. Well, you missed out on a massive two-month window maybe three month window where you start saying where people would have bought gift cards and gifted themselves, gifted someone else, gifted hundreds, hundreds of not hundreds, but dozens of other people, clients, employees, all these that you didn't play up until it was, you know, the holiday season was pretty much over. Focus on gift cards because the top 1% are focusing on it and they're going to win that business. Strategy number four, that the top 1% of e-commerce brands are focusing on this year are custom landing pages. You can see right here, Black Friday at Best Buy is, they have, if you Google it right now, Black Friday 2020 or Black Friday at Best Buy, this is the page that'll come up. Google Black Friday at Arama, this is the page that'll come up. The brands, top brands are launching SEO optimized holiday pages now with an option to sign up to be the first to know. So I come here and I want to see what the Best Buy Black Friday game plan is. Well, they're not ready yet, but guess what? They're offering me to sign up to be the first to know. Now, they're on the same thing. And they even have a countdown timer there. Go down there, you'll see the countdown timer. Now, here's the magic of it. If you have a segment of people who have elected to sign up for Black Friday 2021, Black Friday 2022, wherever this is, they're signing up right away. They want to hear about you. They want to hear the deals. They want to know everything about Black Friday. They're self-segmented, right? They're, they've elected to hear about it. Remember we talked about segmentation, spam strategy, segmentation, segments that they've, they've self-selected to hear about a Black Friday deal, the open rate, click rate, conversion rate, engagement rate, all these will be sky high compared to the rest of your segments because they've self-selected. Build out these evergreen pages now. Build out evergreen pages. Evergreen means living forever, evergreen trade. Uh, so build up these pages now. Build out for the Cyber Five, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Thanksgiving Day. Build out for Green Monday, Christmas Eve, New Year's, you know, Singles Day, all these different times of year that you need to kind of like get that SEO going, but it's also great for signing up for your list, right? It's all in the custom landing page. Now you, it's going to be a bit of a challenge as we get, as we're nearing Q4, SEO may not kick in as much, but if you get a few signups <coughs> that are self-selected and you're willing to, um, and, and you start marketing to them when the time is right, they'll, they'll be higher a much higher engaged audience than your regular list. And unique buying guide pages are a great example too. Stack up your buying guide page with video content and products on there, and that could be promoted everywhere. Use paid media, paid traffic to drive traffic back to these landing pages, and they'll come in and they'll get a bunch of signups right there. And organic traffic will come in because your page is already there and it's there in perpetuity, right? It's built forever. It's a bestbuy.com slash Black Friday. Right? It's there forever. And all these people will sign up. They'll come in, drive paid media there, be the first to know. Who just want to be the first to know? And guess what? Perfect segmentation right there. Build out your custom landing pages. And again, like I said, the goal is to be the first to know. And you send an email to them. You send an SMS message to them. Open rates higher. Click rates higher. Conversion rate higher. Probably the order value will be higher as well. Test it out. Run it. Custom landing pages are the key. And don't just think about Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Think about 
Q1, Q2, Q3, Q3, think about all your custom landing pages, build them now. This is what the top 1% are doing and how they're winning business all year round before they even need to start promoting for Black Friday. Strategy number five that the top 1% of e-commerce brands are thinking about this year is holiday segmentation, right? Remember we talked about that their, the spam strategy is segment, uh, right person, right message, right time, repeat, right? So map out your segmentation per your campaign, okay? You want to map everything out and say, this campaign is going to this person, this campaign is going to that person, um, this gift guy is going to these people, this discount is going to these people, and this will allow you to allow this will allow you to become much more targeted with your offers, much more targeted with your deals, much more targeted with your promotions, and allow you to ensure that you're not sacrificing margins too much, that you're maximizing the value of every single customer and personalizing everything, right? An example is a gift guide. You send your gift guide, maybe you send your best customers who will buy a full price. They want to be the first to know. While a sale, while a discount, while an early Black Friday promotion at mid-November, you can send that to your dead population, kind of your lapsed customers, your dormant population. All that population will, will engage with it, maybe perhaps even more than a gift guide, where it's just kind of ideas, right? That's a great place to start. Here's three segments to focus on that you may want to think about. Number one, holiday buyers from last year. Those who bought last year, prime prime target to talk to focus on this year. Build that segment out. Say everyone who bought last year around this time is our, our holiday buyers. Let's see what they do. Get them to buy again. See if they buy again. Keep targeting them. Another one is similar to what you said, one-time buyers from last year. Same thing. Uh, if they're bought one time, try and get them to repurchase again, certainly during the holiday season, because there's no better time to buy. And finally, also another one that you may want to start testing out is discount versus full price. A discount buyer um, is clearly a, a, a cost-conscious buyer. They just want a deal and they'll buy only a discount. While your full price buyers, you can play around with. There's a lot more wiggle room, right? You can have you can stack more value um, from uh, within them, but without you know taking you know without reducing the cost. So break out those two buyers from the holiday season and see how they play out. But segmentation goes beyond just talking about email or SMS. If you're a brand loyalist and you love the brand, if you have a bunch of them, which I'm sure you do, 80-20 rule, remember? Invite them to join another channel. So if you have people who are big fans of your email program, I love getting your emails, start clicking and engaging, I invite them to join another channel. An email subscriber can now join our SMS, be the first to know about holiday deals by text. Uh, join our Facebook group. You know, be the first to know about offers and deals and the best picks for the holiday season on our Facebook group. All these are ways to kind of, you know, um, be sticky, have your brand, e-commerce brand be sticky in, in the face of the customer and always be available to them. Even if they unsubscribe, you're still on another channel, right? So it allows you to kind of just be always, always available to them in an omnipresent way. Oh, there you go. As I said, go omni-channel, right? Build out your online, well, omni-channel is a little different here, but build out, go omni-channel, build out your online and store buyer segments. Who has bought in store and who has bought online? All year long. They're a perfect example of someone who will buy at a higher rate than someone who just buys online or just buys in store. Someone buys in both areas, perfect fit, right? Build out that segment. Email and SMS subscribers, people who have bought, um, people who are signed up for your email list and signed up for your SMS list. That's a great co segment. They're clearly more invested in your brand than just a one single channel subscriber. Affiliate and email buyers, another great example where you can pair up people who bought um, on discounts from affiliates and people who bought from email. All these areas is just kind of giving food for thought about what type of segments you could build out to win the holiday season. And most importantly, start reactivating your dormant subscribers and your dormant buyers. This is a segment where, you know, they may not have been engaged with you in the past. They may not have, have bought anything from you in the past. They may not really be interested in hearing from you as much, but re try and reactivate them because everyone is buying during this holiday season. If they're dormant on your list, just, that just means they're going to end up buying from Amazon or somewhere else. It doesn't mean that they're not buying. This is the holiday season. You have the opportunity to reactivate them now. If, you're, if it's in October already, start reactivating them in October. As you get to November, you want to stop you know, testing and you know, just may want to kind of start blasting out a little bit more, but start reactivating the dormant ones so they are ready for you, that they're willing to, uh, willing to hear from you, that they're, they're reaching their inbox. They're not going to spam folders and you name it. Start reactivating them now. 
That's the holiday segmentation. Quick look at what the top 1% of e-commerce brands are doing this year for that. Strategy number six, that the top 1% of e-commerce brands are focusing on this holiday season are recommendations and personalization. You can see here the Best Buy email over here shows a clear recommendation engine that's leveraging it. Uh, let's, that's leveraging my personalized views and what I've looked at online at scale to drive higher clicks and to product detail pages, right? By showing me items that I may be interested in and that people that other people are buying that are related to what I viewed, that allows me to see items that I can click right through that are personalized to what I'm looking at. It's not a standard promotion or it says like, you know, here's our sale of the, of, the, of the week or the month of the day. This is personalized to me and I want to know about it. Best of all, I'm clicking back to the product detail page, at which point I have a higher chance of converting. Recs and personalization play a major role um, because it shows that you're listening to what the customer is shopping for, right? If I'm shopping for an iPhone and I, and I see the opportunity to see a MacBook Air and AirPods in there, I have a higher propensity to buy those items, right? I'm, I'm not, I don't have a high propensity. If you're talking, sending me items that you're selling or on, on sale on Black Friday, I have a lower propensity to buy the items that you're showing me than I am about the items that I am, that, that are, that I'm looking at or what are related to what I'm looking at. I'm in the Apple ecosystem here, right? So I'm interested in everything Apple. It's listening to what the customer is shopping for. Build a journey around the gift they're eyeing, right? As you, as you saw from Wayfair in the past when I was looking at Accent shares, right? Seeing that I'm looking at an Apple product means that I am interested in it. I'm interested in buying it, interested in gifting it. I can see the product here. I'll get a piece of content in my next email about it. I'll get a video about the product in my next, in the third email, or I'll get an SMS to say like, hey, here's our buying guide on, on Apple, or here's our buying guide on, on phones. In some cases, I may even get a phone call if it's a very high, you know, price item. I don't know, if like a big studio, right? I may get a phone call. It says, hey, I heard so you're interested in this. Can we help you here? It build the journey around the gift they're eyeing, and that allows you to have a much more personalized relationship with your customer and personalize their journey. In some cases, though, if you're a retailer, I understand the challenges between, you know, these are the items that we're being asked to pitch. These are the items we're being required to pitch. Vendors are paying us money to pitch these products. You can see right at the bottom of the screen, you have HP Chromebase right here. Vendors are asking us to promote it. Merchandisers are asking us to share it within emails. I get it. That's totally fine. But blend it. Blend your items. Show two items that are merchandised, two items that are personalized blend these into one nice cohesive package that looks good and allow you to kind of like, you know, develop a much more personalized journey for your customer. The goal is simple, right? And you can go back to your teams and say, this is why we're doing it. The goal is to get higher engagement and send less emails. If I can send an email here with the much more personalized um, content, guess what? It's going to get higher engagement and get clicked on a lot more. Strategy number seven that the top 1% of e-commerce brands are focusing on this holiday season are product automations. Product automations, as we know, are the product automations that come out when someone's doing an item, when someone's carding an item. When someone is, is taking an action that's related to an item on their store, all these are product automations and they are a major revenue driver during the rest of the year. But certainly in, during the holiday season, they are critical. And the reason why is scarcity, urgency, and exclusivity are what drive holiday sales during the holiday season. So expand your product automations this year. This season is the time to kind of start. By now, you should have mapped out your product automations that are running and expand them and turn them on. This is the time when you want to kind of send, send, focus everything you do on what people are viewing online, what people are browsing. And I'm going to give you some ideas about some of the top product automations that are being configured and launched um, that are launched already for the top 1% of brands that you should be focusing on. Back in stock, low stock are two great automations to turn on. This is where people are looking at items and they know that if it's out of stock, well, they'll just go find somewhere else because again, they have a deadline to get their items. So turning on something that says that an item is back in stock when it is actually back in stock and saying to, sending it to people who have carted the item or viewed the item um, is perfect. It's a perfect automation to turn on and reminds people to come back, look at the item. It's back for now, but everyone's buying it and it may sell out soon. So buy it quickly. Low stock is another great inventory message where you can send it out, say like there's only, once your, once your inventory hits 
10 left, 20 left. This automation triggers out and says, 20 left, come back, come and buy it now. For again, anyone who carded the item, reviewed the item and didn't complete the purchase, that's a great one to say, to send out once the inventory changes. Turn those automations on. New arrivals and best sellers are two major automations that will help fill up your campaign calendar. Every Monday, do a new arrivals. Every Friday or Thursday or Friday or even Saturday or Sunday, do a best sellers email because every week there's something new going on. There's some new offer, some new bundle, some new item that came in stock, some new, um, you know, new spin on an existing item, right? You can start setting up that automation to run on autopilot. That fills up two emails. That's 12 emails for new arrivals in Q4 every Monday, right? 12 emails and then another 12 emails for best sellers, best of the week, best of the month. You know, here's the best sellers that everyone's buying this holiday season. And those are just can run and you populate them with just new arrivals from your site. The best sellers from your site, it's all automated. Talk to your email provider. Clavio does this, right? They are able to turn this on. All the top ESPs are able to turn on these type of automations and it fills up your campaign calendar. Those are two emails you could check off your Q4 calendar, right? And just automate it and just runs. And these get super high engagement. Best of all, in some cases it is, these are, you know, high margin products, full price products. You don't need to show them because people want to know the best of the best of the year, the newest of the year. What can I gift that will make me look good? What can I get that will make me look good? All these are great automations to turn on. And that's a product automation to invest in. New product reviews. Did a new review come to your, onto a certain product and you want people to know about it? It's a great review. It's a five-star review. Let's send, a, send out an email to people who are looking at the item that didn't buy it and need that extra push because they're looking for a review somewhere else. They're going to you know, look on Amazon for the reviews of a product. Look here. Guess what? Someone just left a, a great video testimonial or left a great review or a picture of the item. Guess what? Did you see it? Did you see this review? We think you're interested. Come back and buy it, right? That's a great example of another product automation to run. Replenishment, if you're in the replenishment fit uh, model, um, well, it's a little challenging because it's probably not a great fit to turn on a product automation. This is an example where you may want to turn off a product automation because you don't know who's buying an item for themselves or for as a gift for someone else. So an example would be, you know, I don't know, makeup set or, you know, you know, a soap, soap set, right? Where they have a replenishment option, but they're not buying it for themselves. They're buying it for someone else. So replenishment may not be a good fit here. You may want to kind of actually have a quiz or survey after someone buys this to see who they were buying it for. If it was for themselves, great, replenish. If not, okay, then you know, offer them something else. So product automations are key. And the best part is you set it and forget it, at least for Q4. Turn them on, turn on, work smart, not hard. This is an opportunity for you to leverage all the traffic coming to your site, all the traffic coming to your product detail pages and turn on that automation that will help you know personalize the email at scale and win you business um, without you having to touch anything. That's how the top 1% think. Strategy number eight that the top 1% of e-commerce brands are focusing on this year is going omni-channel. We discussed it before as part of the pillars, but I just want to reiterate it. It's so important to remember, study the customer journey and work backwards from order fulfillment. As we talked about, right, the, the plan is you want to ease their checkout and fulfillment process. So it's important for you to start with, start with saying, where do we want them to be? Where, where, where do they need us to be, right? They need their item in their hand by December 24th, December 23rd, right? It's Christmas day. They need an item right there. So you need to work backwards from that. How do we make sure that happens, right? How do you make sure that everyone is aligned to deliver on that promise, right? All our marketing is aligned and saying, get your item in time because here's the cutoff. Um, all your customer service is working in line. Say like, get your item in time and we're gonna help you get it. You can communicate with us during that entire window and even after the purchase too. You know, store your brick and mortar location and your online store. How are they communicating, right? Um, in store, you still have a window to buy it, but it's only in the 12 hour window because we're closing that store early for, for Christmas, right? So that window of time needs to be communicated as well. That's being omni channel. So focus on the, on, on the end point first and work backwards. And I'll show you exactly what that means. Omni channel means being omnipresent, as we know, and you have to be everywhere that will influence the purchase. It means that uh, on Google, you need to be clear about your store hours. You need to be um, available to say, like, guess what? Our store hours are this and this. Um, your, our shipping deadlines, you can actually buy online and pick up in store. 
and 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 go to Google when you search for Google about my store hours. It's going to be clear and very vivid. You'll see the reviews for holiday um, holiday product reviews are clear and updated. You'll have clear inventory levels like there. It's all about being omnichannel. And your store and online are very clear about their hours and they're communicating that if you buy here, you can get it here. If you return it here, you can get it here. Everything is very seamless and organized. And it comes to marketing, right? Being omnichannel and, and being omnipresent in the customer's mind, give email your first pass. Email is a free channel, right? Remember we said before, $44 for every $1 spent. The ROI is there, the profits are there, the margins are there. You don't need to sacrifice and give a discount and sacrifice your margins on email um, because you know it's it's a free channel. So if someone's browsing an item, doesn't add it to cart, doesn't check out, send email, a browse abandoned email first. You can do Facebook retargeting too, but deprioritize it compared to the email if you're a subscriber. Um, there's no need to you know take a hit on ad costs. In addition, if they could have got them for free by getting, sending them an email, right? So give email the first pass in your journey followed by your best channel. So here's a great example of a journey. If, uh, check, do a 50-50 check. Are they subscribed to your channel? Are they subscribed to email? Great, they get a browse abandoned first. If they're not subscribed, okay, fine. We'll send them an SMS. Not subscribed for SMS? Okay, we'll do a Facebook ad. It, it, that's how you map it all out. So give email the first pass because it's free. You don't want to sacrifice your margins if you don't need to, and then work your way backwards from there. In addition, as we said before, going omni-channel means excelling not just before the purchase, but also during the purchase and after it. So 96% of customers return to brands that offer seamless returns. So this is a great example, again, where um, excelling in fulfillment and also making sure that they can return it seamlessly allows them to build a lot more trust with your brand and try you out again. If you can offer returns in store, that's also great. If they can just bring the item back, come to store, return it, buy some replacement, that is fantastic. As long as you make it seamless, that's helpful with going omni-channel. This is so critical to brands to think through right now. The next strategy that the top 1% of e-commerce brands are thinking about right now for this holiday season that will help them win the holiday season is the delivery and fulfillment strategy. You can see right here, back a second. Delivery and fulfillment strategy. So. Delivery and fulfillment are critical this year because of the logistics and supply chain issue. Getting items this year during, within, for the e-commerce space, if you're in the e-commerce space, getting items this year is so, so convoluted, right? Delays in China, delays in, in shipping. You know, you had uh, that boat that was stuck, right? In that, I think it was Suez Canal. Um, you have trucking delays. Everything is affecting the, the supply chain. And so delivering on the item that they got is, unsure, it's uncertain. No one's entirely sure about when your item will come to your door, especially during the busiest of shopping seasons. So number one, you see here that obviously we know out of the box, order confirmation, shipping confirmation, order delivered, all these emails are running and it's helpful to be transparent with what's happening, right? You see my package right there on my doorstep. So it's so important to be transparent at all times, right? We talked about that before. Transparency is key. You need to be transparent in everything you're doing. And the way to do that is by recommending people sign up for your texts, sign up for email reminders, encourage them to join your list, encourage them to, to, to be a part of knowing the status of the order, the status if your order gets affected. But it's a double, it's a double win because if you encourage them to sign up, you are now building your list. Can you get, can you market to them? Well, not necessarily but you're still building your list. You're still data that's coming in that you can use, right? A great example of this is by receipts. Um, if you're in store, uh, offering them to sign up to get an email receipt, an SMS receipt are great initiatives that allow you to kind of deliver on your fulfillment for transparency and deliver on their expectations while also growing your list. And even if they don't, don't sign up for promotions, that's okay because Facebook and Google can still market to them. They can still use those data points to market to them. Right, you can still run an ad. Right, is it free? No, but you still have a data point that you can use. It was better than you were doing before, so that allows you to kind of build your list and be transparent and excel in delivering fulfillment. And now, from the marketing point of view, you can also build campaigns around delivery cutoffs. So, for example, um, if you know, remember you're working backwards from fulfillment. So backwards means 
I need to get this item to the I need to get this item to the to my customer by December 23rd, December 24th, the latest. So we're going backwards. That means that my last email to them for free shipping will have to go out a week before that cutoff, right? So now I have in that campaign calendar that was planned out for Q4, in that campaign calendar, I have last chance for free shipping. Now, when's the last chance for any shipping, even if they have to pay for it? Well, that's three days before. Great. Well, here's the last chance for any shipping. Okay. Well, missed that cutoff at deadline time. Now you have in that three-day window is your last chance for in-store pickup to get the item. So now, that, see, that, see that how you pieced out your campaign calendar in that last week? with three campaigns, three, four, five campaigns, whatever it may be, focus on urgency and exclusivity, really urgency and scarcity, really. So these are the, that's how you map out your campaign and work backwards from that time, from that deadline. So, you know, and it fills up your campaign calendar, allows you to map it out a lot better. And it helps you excel in understanding the delivery and fulfillment. Your customers are not gonna be left hanging, right? And they won't abandon. And they won't say like, oh man, you said there was free shipping. You said there was free delivery. Now you're not you know, guaranteeing it. I need to get the item. I'm pissed, right? So now that avoids that and allows you to be you know, cutting edge, allows you to be transparent, convenient, and just be a, overall a much more omni-channel business. That's how the top 1% think, and that's how the top 1% are winning in e-commerce right now. That's where you can be, where you could position your brand to excel in this holiday season. Finally, strategy number 10, to that the top 1% of e-commerce brands are focusing on this holiday season are getting repeat purchases. Look at this graphic right here. Did you know that 75% of e-commerce customers stay one-time buyers? They don't migrate. They don't grow. They're just willing to try something out once, right? They don't go from one time to two time. 75% of them falls in line with that 80-20 rule, right? 80% of your business comes from 20% of your customers. 20% of them will grow. And where's the majority of your revenue will come from? But 75% of them, if you just get them to buy again, that, that will that unlocks a ton of value for your brand, right? So here's another fact is that 80% of those one-time buyers come during the holiday season. So during the holiday season is where the majority of your one-time buyers uh, uh, start making that purchase. That's the one time. So if you have one goal, get them now. Here's a very interesting stat. Another stat, 77% of customers gift themselves and others. So inherently, they are prepared to buy twice, minimum. They're prepared to buy once for themselves and once for someone else, spouse, child, parent, coworker. And brands don't leverage that. They don't get that extra purchase because they just kind of focus on gaining as many purchases as they can. They don't focus on gaining two times from, one time, from a one-time buyer right? <laughs> if you have a chance to buy, if you have a choice between getting two one-time buyers or one two-time buyer, what would you rather have? A one two-time buyer, because the chance of them buying again increases significantly. Their lifetime value increases by six times, right? So there's a significant amount of value to begin to buy again. So your goal is to get one more purchase in this season. Focus on upsells early in December. Many times we focus on, brands focus on upsells at Q, in Q1, right? They bought during the holiday season. Let's not upsell them. They bought, no problem. We're going to upsell them back uh, over in Q1. Focus on them now because this is the time where they're only buying. This is when their their wallet is open. They have cash ready to spend, right? They are they need to gift people. They need to get stuff for themselves and gifts and gift someone else, right? So upsell them. These go really well with your gift and get it in time for the holidays. You can still get it in time. Focus early in the holiday season. Right after they buy for Black Friday, focus on upselling them mid-December so they can still get in by December 24th. Another great option, remember we talked about gift cards. Forgot someone on your list, go get a gift card. How many times have we kind of ran out and said, oh, I forgot this guy, I gotta go to a party, I'm going to a holiday party, forgot someone on my list, let me go get a gift card. Let me go get something from Walgreens or CVS. Well, guess what? If I got someone on the list, get a gift card. It's easy. It's a digital gift card. Probably will get there faster than you driving over to Walgreens, right? Get a gift card. That's two purchases. You got so, you got a gift for yourself? Great. Get a gift card for someone that you forgot. Another great opportunity to get two purchases in this holiday season. Center campaigns around bundles to boost AOV. You bought this item. You bought a MacBook. Great. Complete the bundle. 
get your webcam, get your mic, get your lighting, everything you need to do to create a YouTube video, whatever you're trying to create, right? When you're gifting a YouTube YouTuber, whatever it may be, right? Center campaigns around the bundle. You bought once, bought, buy the rest of it before the holiday season is over because it's the best time to get the deal, right? Win the gift, be that best gift giver, right? This is the time. Focus on those upsells. Another, another great example, like you said before, gift cards are the perfect, you know, two-time purchase, purchase option, right? Especially now in this holiday season. Gift card redemption emails go out right after December 25th, where people have are flush, flush with gift cards, flush with cash. You know, their grandparents gave them a whole bunch of gift cards or cash, and they're willing to spend. But you're waiting till six, six or seven days of the end of the month, at the end of the year, to sell it sell them early in December, get them to use their gift cards early, right? But even if they don't, 725th and on, use your gift card, use your gift card. These are user on these New Year Day deals. Use it on these end of year deals because you won't see these deals again, end of the year, right? Use them here, use them or lose them, give an incentive to spend their cash right away. That's a great way to get a two-time buyer, a traditional one-time buyer to become a two-time buyer. Here's the, here's the magic of it. You get a someone, you get someone to buy one time and then get them repeat by your loyalty increases the value of your of your lifetime value increases in this case in some cases seven times ten times and now you have this customer loyal to you for the rest of the year it's not a one-time buyer that you won't, won't see again till q4 next year they will buy again they're loyal they're excited you fulfill your promises that's how you win at e-commerce by reten, reten, uh, retention retaining customers and if you can do it in the holiday season when their wallet is open and they're spending money, it's the best time. Jump on it. That's what the what top 1% are thinking about. And that's how they win. That's how they win at e-commerce. Try it. Guarantee you this will help your business grow significantly. I'll pause now for questions or comments. Due to time, you can email any questions. Um, I've uh, definitely answered some of the questions probably on this webinar already as we went. But now I want to talk a little bit about the holiday results you can expect to see from implementing all these strategies. Here are some of the great holiday results that we've seen when we've implemented the top 1% strategies for you know, our client's business. This is gonna be a major boost for you. I wanna give a really clear example. He says right here, look at this, look at the revenue. A 54% growth in revenue year over year. You can see that we delivered a lot less emails. A majority of this revenue came during the Q4, right? And it's just important to see that that the, the perspective on how you change your how it affects your year. Just winning Q4 affects your year. We started testing a lot of different initiatives in Q4, personalization, recommendations, segmentation, all in Q4. And what ended up happening is it, it drove the business for the rest of the year. So if you're thinking about when do we start implementing all these strategies, the time is now. The time is in Q4 where you have a lot of data coming in, a lot of traffic, a lot of visitors. And it works. So you can see here, um, you can see in 2019 and 2018, if you can go to the bottom, you'll see that you know the revenue grew by, let's do this 2017, 2018, revenue grew by 54%, orders jumped by 40%. Yet look over there, you see delivered dropped by 12%, right? We sent less emails, yet we made 50% more money. Look at conversion over there. I haven't focused on that really, but the conversion rate by using our spam strategy, by using that philosophy of right person, right message, right time, repeat, boosts conversion rate by 33%. They are, they get to the right place. They're ready to check out. You showed them something they're interested in and they bought. Simple as that. A quick bonus, unsubs drop too, right? So you sent less emails, your unsub rate dropped. It's a win-win for everyone. 2019 was the same example, 33% revenue growth sent 11% less emails, right? The revenue jumped by personalizing your emails by spam strategy. That's how you see results. This is another slide of that. Great. Now, before we end, I'd like to be, I wouldn't be remiss if I started saying that, you know, you should be taking these strategies and putting them into action. So I want to invite you, jump and take advantage of our free strategy session. It's a free strategy session. You'll talk to people who have done this for seven, eight, nine figure brands, billion dollar brands, and we'll share the strategies they do and start implementing them for your business. We'll get a deliverability audit report for you. Go and share, share with you exactly what we see under deliverability. 
We'll audit the customer journey ourselves. We do a quick, you know, click through here and there, see your email program, your email, SMS, and CRM strategy already um, by doing a customer journey audit. We'll review your design, coding, and responsiveness of your emails, share some ideas and insights on that. We'll give you feedback on some of the campaigns and promotions we got. We'll give analysis of our automations and nurture series, all on this strategy session. We'll audit your website conversion effectiveness as well, which is so critical when you're doing an email, SMS, and CRM program. And we'll review your retargeting experience. All this is, is, is important because if you're not retargeting well, well, um, that also affects how your list is growing. Um, you can go there by visiting highflyerdigital.com slash book and book a free strategy session. If you're on this webinar, you're, you clearly have found it very critical and important for your brand to take the next step in your program and build a better customer relationship. And you can do that by jumping on the free strategy session. Together, we have one goal, right? We want to level the playing field, help your brand become more profitable, improve customer relationships for your brand. That's the magic of it. Market to people, not emails. Build a better customer relationships. They will reward you with revenue and growth and loyalty. Grow customer value and loyalty. We want to help elevate your brand to compete and win in a crowded marketplace. No more jump into Amazon or, or they'll come to you from now on, right? They'll see that you are a player. And let's make it happen. You'll crawl, walk, run, and fly. Jump on a call. We'd love to talk with you. And jump on that boat free strategy session. We'll take the next steps. Elevate your brand to compete and win. Thank you for joining me on this webinar. Looking forward to meeting you.